Thank you. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Duran Inci, and I'm the CEO at Optimum 7. I prepared uh, an entire presentation with uh, technical details, but then I decided not to do that presentation. The reason is any information that you seek nowadays is online. It's at your fingertips. Um, I think what differentiates a lot of the things that we do is an idea, right? Everything starts with an idea. So today, I wanted to talk about how things go from idea all the way to execution and to success, and how you can leverage digital space, internet technology, digital marketing, to be able to um, actually achieve these goals. It makes me happy to see uh, portfolios like Denzel's that earlier showed uh, a couple of different execution ideas. So what kind of ideas do you have? What kind of a thinker are you? Um, when you start with an idea, and when you are executing or planning that idea, it needs to make sense. So when you create these pitches for large companies like Adidas and Nike and, and, and other huge brands, um, the pitch is going to be always difficult. Uh, you're, you, you're doing a, a portfolio review today. I'm pretty sure that you have everything covered in your portfolio. All the checklists are done. However, you have to really nail down the idea and who you are pitching that idea to. So when you look at an example um, of perception, right? The perception makes a lot of difference uh, in the eyes of the buyer or in the eyes of who you're marketing to. And that in itself is going to push that idea forward in terms of how you execute. So a lot of the things that we deal with marketing today have to do with emotions. Uh, this is a, a, a photo, it's called actually Flower Power, if you guys don't know it. This was during the Vietnam protests, and this was a young protester that was putting flowers uh, on the rifles of the soldiers. So when you think about when you stop thinking about business to consumer, B2C, business to business, business to government, B2G, and you start thinking about human to human is when you're going to win. And that has to do with when you are getting hired, when you are in an interview, when you are pitching a specific idea, when you're executing an idea. And this is going to sound terrible, but how are you leveraging the human emotion? And this is the whole concept of marketing. Now, we used to do digital marketing 10 years ago, and it was, okay, I put up a website, I optimize it, I pull some traffic, I get some conversions. It's not like that anymore. Um, we all use Netflix. Um, when the show comes up on Netflix, it's not a five out of a 10. It's either great or terrible. Right? When you are dealing with um, a consumer brand, your experience with Apple, is it a 1 or a 10? It's either a 2 or a 9 or a 10. Your experience with Comcast, is it a 1 or a 10? Right? So, when you think about these experiences, we are spoiled as consumers. Consumers of whatever you want to look at. Consumers of beverages, consumers of food, consumers of digital content, which you have a lot to do with. Um, so average consumer now has five seconds of attention span online. Um, if you get, and you're included in this consumer base, if you get their attention within five seconds, you got it. If you didn't, they bounce. This is true for websites. We could get all geeky about it. You know, we could talk about websites and I could pull up analytics reports for you and show you all of this, but that's my five seconds, right? I would lose you right there. So, when you present yourselves as an employee, when you present yourselves as an agency, when you present yourselves in the dating world, you have about five seconds to impress the other side. And this is true, okay? So that's why I talk about emotions. So 
talking about human emotions, again, um, this also goes back to how you are helping people. This doesn't mean charity. When you are executing a specific project, um, how does that help humanity? Uh, this is a picture taken from a, um, a homeless shelter in India. Uh, so that's why, again, it makes me very happy to see um, projects. And uh, projects that have to do with um, safety, projects that have to do with um, making people informed about certain things, certain political issues, uh, social issues that we deal with, right? So why am I talking about all of this human emotion? Because it's going to get you to your goal faster if you can appeal to human emotion from a marketing standpoint. Um, again, we talk about the same thing, you know, human to human is going to get you there. And forget all the technical details, forget all the checklists, forget all the bullet points. Um, how are you taking your idea and how are you appealing to human emotion with your idea? So this gentleman, uh, his name is Adam, he's from the UK. He couldn't get a job as a creative director for maybe, I don't know, 18 months. And then he basically said, okay, I'm tired of this. I don't have the experience. I recently graduated. And he did this, okay, which is a billboard that he spent uh, 500 pounds on. And this went viral. And he got, after he did this, he got about maybe 15 or 16 job offers. It's a creative idea. He had an idea. He had the skill set. He had the creative, it doesn't take a lot of creative to do this, he just put a website together, employeeadam.com, and he put it, you know where he placed this billboard? He placed it in front of the company that he wanted to work for, okay? Uh, we spent a lot of money on a lot of things. So, you guys, and I watched the presentations, you guys have the creative angle already, okay? But you have to think, I know this is very generic and it sucks, but you have to think outside the box. How do you appeal to human emotion? Okay? And I love the Adidas pitches. I love the Nike. I love the Apple pitches. I love the Microsoft pitches. You're not going to be visible to them. Why don't you find a company? This is all public information, by the way. You can go to Owler. You can go to Glassdoor and see the revenue of any company and how they are doing financially. Why don't you go to companies that are doing four, five, six million dollars? all the way to $100 million, not billion dollar companies. And why don't you do those same pitches to those guys? Those guys have the money. They need people. Okay? They, can, they can probably pay you a higher salary than Nike. And you're not competing with the 100,000 or 200,000 people that are trying to work for Nike or Adidas or these huge companies or Google. Right? So. How are you, you are creative, but how are you being creative? Are you being kind of like just graphically creative? Are you being creative in terms of, okay, I create really cool shit? Or are you being creative with your idea and with the execution of that idea? How are you differentiating it? Um, I'm going to talk about two brands that I love, billion dollar companies. But it all goes from idea to execution. Again, um, Lego, I think there are 62 pieces of Lego for every single person on Earth. Billions, and I believe there are 400 billion pieces of Lego that have been manufactured or produced. I'm pretty sure all of you played with Legos when you were kids. I played with them when I was a kid. Um, I know that. Older people than me play with them when they were kids. So when it's a brand, how do you make it a lifestyle brand and how do you apply to multiple generations? That's what brands are looking for right now. And the generation that we're dealing with right now is the millennials, correct? So how do you appeal to them? What are they going to know? You guys are young now. I'm older compared to you, but you're gonna get older. And if you can see the, so don't look down six months, one year. Try to look 
further 10 years, right? A lot of people overestimate what they can do in a year. And they underestimate what they can do in 10 years. Okay, so plan for the five, 10 year goal, which is where is this industry going? And we're going back to digital and technology now. You know, look at mobile. Uh, the next thing that's coming up is artificial intelligence and machine learning. You will work with machine learning and AI. It sounds like a dream right now, but you know, mobile phones or mobile devices sounded like a dream in 2000, 2001. So see 10, 15 years ahead. How are you different? Again, how are you differentiating yourself from the person sitting next to you? And it's going to happen. Everybody got ideas. Ideas, great. But how are you going to execute? Okay. Um, again, Apple, another brand that I admire. Um, Apple used to make money from computers. Not anymore. They have maybe 10% of the market share with personal computers. But Steve Jobs and the Apple team saw this years ago. And they said, we have to jump into other products. iPods, probably over a billion, two billion units sold. Last year, Apple sold 400 million iPhones. That's a lot of iPhones, right? And how did they achieve that? How did they go from a personal computer to iPhones? Again, idea, execution, technology. And the, you might think, okay, how does this relate to me? But it does. If you understand technology, you can see it further. And here is why it does. Okay, these kids now, not you, are growing up with technology. They're growing up knowing all these technologies. They use it better than you, five-year-olds, four-year-olds, the next generation, you might call it. How are you going to appeal to them? They're going to even have less of an attention span than your generation. And how are you going to address them? What are they looking at? What are they going to grow up with? So people like business owners, managers, directors, C-level people, VPs, that's what they look at. They are looking at the next set of talent that can tell them what's going to happen. And things have changed. People are not bosses anymore. They're not, oh, I'm the boss, what I say happens. No, people are getting smarter. My friends, all business owners are saying, I have to surround myself with people smarter than me. So. I have 20, almost 20 years of experience in this industry, which I call internet technology and digital space, right? How are you going to come, graduated out of school, and school me? So that's what's going to be the differentiator when you go to these interviews. The checklists are nice, guys. You already have it covered. Your portfolio is perfect. It's beautiful. How are you going to differentiate yourself? What's the idea? What's the pitch? Yes, get to know these people you're interviewing, but what's the idea? Go, don't go there blank. Go there with a pitch. Um, and very, very importantly, imagination. Don't stop thinking. Don't stop creating. This is going to move very fast now. A lot of people don't understand. A lot of people think that technology moves on a linear path. On a graph, this is linear. Technology does not move on a linear path. It moves on an exponential curve. Okay, So this is going to move very fast and we won't even see what's coming, especially with the new technologies like what's happening with voice, what's happening with video, what's happening with... Uh, anybody saw the... I think they released it two weeks or three weeks ago, the Instagram shoppable. You can shop things on Instagram now. So let's take that one step further. Netflix is working on this right now. A lot of people don't know. Product placement on shows. I've been talking about this for years. I see a nice bracelet or a watch on a show. I'm like, ooh, I want that. I pause. There's a shop button on my device. I press shop. And the products that are on that screen, people are working on mapping every single shot of video right now and place products in there. People want it. Okay, so I think in about three to five years we'll be able to shop in that manner, maybe sooner. Okay, how can your creative abilities 
attack that industry. Okay? Um, so imagination, very important. You have to be able to see these things, and to see these things, you have to immerse yourself, not only in your industry, but in technology. And I always ask this question to my friends when we go on these uh, entrepreneur retreat, retreats or uh, the masterminds in different places. Um, what's your EMC squared? What is your EMC squared? That means what's the cool idea you got? What's the world changing idea you have? You have to have a few. Okay? And if you don't, start working on it. Don't look at this at a micro level. Just have a nice bird view of technology on this industry and see how you can make a change. That's how you're going to, if you take that approach, that's how you're going to uh, differentiate yourself from everybody else. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to hit the subscribe button for more videos on e-commerce, custom development, marketing, and much more. And leave us a comment if you'd like to discuss the contents of this video further.